pretty well. How are you? Well, I'm dry. That's the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's um, it's it has been very rainy, hasn't it? There's been a lot of rain. There has, and I mean, Storm Babette hasn't helped either, has it? Um, is Somerset a, a wet and windy place? It's pretty wet, I have to say. I did. I went for a walk yesterday, and I was like, do you know what? It's sort of. I mean, we're very lucky because we haven't got a house that's flooded I know a lot of people who have had houses flooded and that is really bad we did go up to um on Saturday we went up to my kids have a band and they've got this tour they're going on at the moment and and so they've got this UK tour and we were up in Ipswich and wow Ipswich on Thursday it was I mean I didn't even know that the storm was as bad until we got there and there were just cars that were just buried in water I was like god this is horrendous so yeah I, I think when we watch the weather forecast and we see all these storms coming in, we sometimes don't think about the implications. Um, we do know that a lot of people in the UK are having huge issues, but coming to perhaps Sussex, where I am at the moment, you know, we've had our gutters overflowing, etc. And I think we just look at it as money down the drain sometimes. So can you give me a little bit of an idea how much water we're losing on a monthly basis due to to leaks in and around the house so leaks within the house are what we call clean water leaks so this is when you have the reason we should care about it is because to make the water clean uses the earth's resources we need power to clean the water so it doesn't actually matter if you waste river water but what if you waste water that comes into your house that's a very 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 precious resource and it's cost a lot of money and resources to make it clean so if you leave drips dripping say a dripping tap we could be wasting 697 million pounds on water bills each year so that's 900 million liters of clean drinking water every day i mean that's that's a huge significant isn't it it's huge amount of water because you think one drip doesn't matter but actually one drip and then another drip and then if everybody has a drip kind of it, it mounts mounts up if i'm really honest it, it's not great for your tap and your sink and your home to have dripping water and water leaks. Whilst they are hidden sometimes, you do know about the other ones. And it's the right thing in the long term because you'll you'll end up in a stitch in time saves nine. And the problem is a lot of DIY people in the home don't necessarily fix things the way they need to be fixed. Should we be calling in plumbers to help us with our leaks? Well, do you know, it's Affinity Water do on their website have a list of plumbers that you can call. If you're not very confident, then yes, I think you're better off calling a plumber, but you can do it yourself. And that's quite a simple process where you can use the isolator valve, which is under, you'll find it under the sink. So clear everything out. You should have a little valve which you turn with a screwdriver, check the tap, make sure that the tap is off. And then and that when you open up the tap, no water comes out. Check that it's working or t- turn the stopcock off uh, outside. You should be you should sort of know where your stopcocks are, to be honest, in your home before there's a disaster, not when there's a disaster. <laughs> I always think it's a good idea to get a marker pen and write it on the bar, um, get a permanent marker, write it on your boiler where your stop tap is, because you don't want to be looking for your stop tap when you've got a problem. You want to know exactly where it is. Anyway, so once you've isolated the tap, you can then take it to bits with a pliers, adjustable spanners, to take it to pieces. And then you'll find inside this either ceramic washer, in which case it's a modern tap, which means you'll have to get a, a replacement cartridge, or it'll be a more traditional tap, and traditional taps were able to be fixed. Um, modern taps can't be fixed, but old-fashioned taps could be. So that you can you can either uh, you just replace the washer, but you probably have to do a little bit of grinding out and reseating. You get, there's a little tool called a reseating tool because lime scale often grinds a little like grooves in mm-hmm. the inside where the washer sits flat. So, but it's not a difficult job to do. But you probably have to be a little bit determined to do it. Online, you'll find lots of YouTube videos of how to do it. But if you're not confident, I probably would get a plumber around or do it when you've got a friend coming over or your dad or your brother or your mum or someone who's done it before. Just say, hey, do you want to come and have a cup of tea? And then while they're there, go, oh, 
while you're here, I was going to do this. Can you watch? <laughs> <laughs> and hence the rise of leak parties, perhaps. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do you think with the cost of living that people are concerned about calling out plumbers? Because, again, you just never quite know, do you? There are a lot of very handy um, apps where you can get a quote for work. So you, you really should know in advance what it's going to cost. But sometimes there are other issues like it's leaked through maybe, as you were just saying with the example of the tap dripping through the cupboard underneath the sink and then it goes through the back of the cupboard and then it goes onto the floorboards and before you know it you're looking at a not a major disaster but rather a, a, a bad disaster. The ongoing cost of, it, of the damage can be a lot more than a plumber for the day but I, um, I think if you if you are a bit I mean, the difficulty is getting a plumber out to to fix, say, a leaking tap. You'll probably have to pay them a day rate because they've got to come all the way there and all the way back, and that's not unreasonable. Mm -hmm. So, if you've got a few jobs, it's it's better. But if I was, I the other option is that if you've got some neighbours, chat to your neighbours and say, do you have any little dripping taps or you know any little bits and pieces that need doing. Uh, by a plumber and if you've got a neighbor on either side or a couple of you you know obviously it doesn't help if you live in the middle of a wood in the countryside that's, <laughs> that but, um, but if you if you live you know if you if you've got any neighbors have a quick chat to them see if they've got any little things and then combine the jobs and get a plumber for to do all those jobs at the same time that's a great idea I love that the neighborhood leak watch that sounds a magnificent thing to have <laughs> I mean, we know that leaks don't just disappear, don't we? They they really water is just it infiltrates everything. So I know in the lettings industry, obviously, uh, lettings agents go out and they check for leaks and they check that everything is as it should be. Do you think homeowners should do a similar thing themselves, just going around and checking whether they do have any leaks? I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, I, I think to, you know, every now and then, pull the sofas away from the wall or pull your bed out. It's not a bad idea anyway, to be honest, because you can give it a quick clean. I mean, I'm not giving people housework no. sort of lectures. <laughs> but, you know, you, you probably should. I remember years and years ago when I was quite young, I didn't ever move an armchair and and it sat there for years and I hoovered around it and hoovered mm. around it. And then when I did, it had moth and all the carpet had been eaten underneath. Oh, and I learned no. that day that I was like, oh, you shouldn't leave your armchair there for three years because it's sort of really disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, but I, <laughs> so you find, like, if I had moved the armchair, I would have known there was some moth and I would have been able to deal with it instead of lose my rug, which now I have a section of the rug missing. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but I so I yeah, I would probably go around and check in your home, whether it's rented or owned. You know, we all, you know, if it's your home, it's your home. So I would deal with it. I mean, rainwater is the most significant reason for damage. But these hidden leaks, which is our plumbing just weeping away. And and actually very often it's around the boiler or you know, you, you probably do know it's happening. You just turn a blind eye. But all I'm suggesting is you don't turn a blind eye. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a guess that perhaps a dripping toilet system is one of the things that really does cause a lot of water loss? Uh, massive. It's actually, it's the the uh, cistern in, inside the cistern, you have a ballcock mm -hmm. and the ballcock shuts off the water. So you flush it and then it lets a load of water out and then it fills up because it's the weight of that gravity that sort of flushes everything in the loo away. But it's really, really easy for you to just kind of turn the other way and not think about it because it's not actually causing any damage in your bathroom. But you'll know that, so when this, the, the ball cock lets by, so the valve, so there's a ball that comes, rises up and stops the water coming in. And that little joint can get, you know, it's well, again, they were easier to fix in the mm. olden days than the modern ones. The modern ones are really difficult to fix. You have to get a whole new inside. In the olden days, you could just take it to pieces and put it back together with the bit. But yeah, if that ball cock lets by, so it doesn't quite shut enough, it will just continue having a little bit of water. And you can tell that because if you look inside your loo pan after you flushed, and it's flushed away, there should be nothing trickling down the edge of the loo pan inside. And so if you look down when you haven't used the loo for a couple of hours, it should be completely dry in there. If it's not completely dry, then you have a, a ball cock that is letting water by and you're wasting money and you're, we, it's a precious resource. But also there's a, a Affinity have a, a leaky loo strip, which so if you're not... <laughs> 
totally confident about looking going oh yeah. is that so there's two other options one you could do a little line of watercolor paint in there just a tiny little line and if that's to run in the morning so wait till you know go go in and think is that leaking or not do a little line of watercolor paint in the morning if it's not there then you're it's it's letting by or this leaky loose strip which you can stick inside the loo and it tells you that's brilliant. Now, just to finish, because I know you're a very busy lady as normal, Sarah, your top three top tips for homeowners and getting rid of these leaks. I mean, they should be looking after presumably their money. We need to protect the environment and obviously the home as well, because you don't want further damage. So just give me your three top tips. So my three top tips would be if you see it, if you're to any taps are dripping, then fix them either mm-hmm. yourself or if you're not confident then get a plumber in or if you can't find a plumber go to the affinity affinity water website mm-hmm. um, and the next thing would be if you see a damp patch anywhere don't ignore it have a look at why it's there it, there's always a reason there's always a logical reason they don't just pop out of nowhere mm-hmm. the other is to get inside the area the cupboard the airing cupboard which is what we used to call it because i'm a million years old but um <laughs> the airing cupboard or the cupboard where all your plant is so the cupboard with your boiler or your hot water cylinder don't often we've stuffed loads of things in it and just you know because it's like you know out of the way and you've stuffed a brush and dust pan and a few old cloths and loads of stuff you shove it all in but you really need to I think it's worth taking everything out of that cupboard and having a really good look around with a torch because that's where you might find leaks but the danger is you don't see it for years and years and years because you've shoved all your old coats and wellies in there and stuff that you want to get rid of. (laughs) That's great advice I think we should probably be getting our wellies out anyway with all this wet weather coming. Completely completely. a wetsuit to be honest. (laughs) Oh dear Sarah thank you for joining me on Let's Talk Property. Lovely thanks so much.